Tamaraos and guests from in the Institute and the other institutes, welcome to our online lecture series. We have just finished our first set of online lecture series which cover the fundamentals of research writing. And today, we welcome you to the fourth part of the Institute of Education, Graduate Programs and Transnational Education's online lecture series. I am Shini, and let me be your moderator for today's lecture. To begin and jumpstart this event, we will have the Dean of the Institute to give the opening remarks. Let's have Dean Harold Jan Kolala. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chini. Uh, Dr. Chini Aparisha is our program head in the Institute of Education Graduate Programs and Transnational Education. A few community colleagues and guests from other institutions, attendees overseas, and everyone who is tuned in in our Facebook Live via FU official Facebook web page. Welcome to the fourth part of the Institute of Education, Graduate Programs and Transnational Education online lecture series. It is my honor to welcome you all and give you a little introduction about this lecture and our speaker. This fourth installment of our online lecture is part of our commitment to deliver quality education by sharing with you some valuable and timely information through our competent faculty members. The Institute of Education Graduate Programs is home to dedicated educators and competent researchers. The featured speaker this afternoon belongs to our roster faculty members who is not only adept in pedagogy or andragogy, but have established good reputation in the field of research. Our faculty belongs to our department with 100% faculty engagement in research. This series was created with you in our mind, as we know that many of you would like to find the motivation and the knowledge needed to create your space in research and teaching during this time of pandemic. We thank our speaker for helping us achieve this goal of extending our institute's commitment to deliver accessible, quality, and research-based education. As the Center of Excellence in Teacher Education, awarded by the Commission on Higher Education, we uphold the value of research and quality teaching and learning, and we commit to strengthening the teacher education as a discipline in our country. Let me now give you a short introduction about our speaker for this online lecture. As mentioned, we pride that the featured speaker this afternoon belongs to our roster faculty members who are dedicated and competent in instruction and research. Our featured speaker today is Dr. Heidelberg de Marucot. He specializes in teaching sports science related courses and sports management subjects. Dr. Dimarukot has bachelor's and master's degree in teaching physical education and doctor of educational management degree. He has international publications in ASEAN Citation Indexed Journal and the book Curriculum Evaluation in Physical Education Program. Dr. Dimarukot's research interests include the following, program evaluation in education, sports performance and health related allied, sports management, teaching and learning modalities in higher education. Dr. Dimarukot's nickname is Denden. He's, uh, we call him Denden. Colleagues and guests, it is my privilege to introduce to your faculty in the Institute of Education, Dr. Denden Dimarukot. Thank you very much, Dean, for the grabe yung intro talagang. It, it really pumped my energy and sabi ko, the introduction itself does not, does not put me to drink any coffee at all. I think it's more than enough. Thank you very much, Dean. Uh, okay. Um, uh, to, 
before I start, I, I really wanted to share this with you because um, recently we are bombarded with a lot of um, issues and challenges because of this pandemic. Um, it, it amazed me so much that uh, the Far Eastern University, not specifically on a, a specific institute or college, but the entire university has its own strategic manner. How will they able to come up to to give these students um, to, to whatever learning modalities they are trying their best to, to reach out. It, it is not me to ask that um, some of the other universities, because of this pandemic, are, are in, in, in closure. Uh, that's why it, I think at some point uh, I am very thankful and the students as well uh, I, I think it's very thankful as well that the university is coming up with a very specific manner and how will they be able to cater with not only those who have the capacity to, to acquire education, but those who are also the last, the least, and the lost. And, and I, I give credits to the entire university at the same manner to our beloved dean and all the administrators of the Far Eastern University. Uh, I hope in, in in little ways that we are sharing and we are equipping not only the teachers but all, also the students. Because at, at the end of the day, uh, I really believe that we, we educators, regardless if, if we are administrator or a regular faculty or a specialist, we don't just impart knowledge, but because we always and we always touch lives. Okay, to start with, um, when the Institute of Education, specifically the graduate studies, asked me what would be my topic, as I look at the Commission Higher Education, um, before we called it tri triangular manner or the triangle of um, how the university um, must see education, it's the publication, where the research, the community engagement, and the other one is uh, instruction. So uh, this one, I hope in my little or way of uh, sharing my knowledge, um, I, I'm not suggesting or saying this is the best in this in this hard time. It's just that maybe in, in, in a glimpse of it, if we are trying to being, it's hard for us to adopt maybe a different type of modality, maybe you can see or pick something from it that you could use as a, that will lighten up and make us more energized in, in teaching, regardless if it's face-to-face uh, -face or uh, full online or asynchronous or simple. The, the title of my presentation will be Adopting Flexible Learning Modalities. If it's a learning modality, it's not because it does not focus on the learning, flexible learning itself. Um, many teachers nowadays uh, tend to use it very loosely. Um, I hope uh, as, I, I, as I push and, and try to share my knowledge about it. Um, flexible learning is something that we can consider. Um, it is applicable uh, or full online or asynchronous and synchronous. But uh, let us not forget that despite the hardship of the teachers who's preparing for, I hope all the students uh, who's watching this uh, presentation might also consider that your teacher is trying their best for you to acquire the knowledge the best they could they could offer and i hope uh, this one will help to start with um to start the presentation uh, as we all know the commission on higher education is a government entity uh, that governs or um governs the both public and private higher education institution um they are the one who's crafting the policies and guidelines that's why um, this one also came from them, um, specifically mentioned by uh, Prospero de Vera, the, the chair of the, the Commission Higher Education, um, suggesting that implementing flexible learning can start in August. However, other institutions also have their um, ways and means or adopting a different style uh, on how they will able to give or they can disseminate the the form education their student needs. Some other institution does not uh, apply the flexible learning because 
they, they think that their uh, structured learning uh, or the type of education is much more suitable, suitable for them. And then they only follow a certain um, recommendation from the Commission Higher Education, but, but as, as per academic freedom, the institution has the capacity uh, to suggest also or to implement what type of learning modalities they are going to use. Uh, as I go on, um, the flexible learning uh, focuses not just just on one aspect. It focuses on the pace, place, and mode of their learning, according to Gordon of 2014. Um, it does not focus merely from the teacher, but it focuses more on the student. Just to give you a glimpse of, of what it is all about. It could, the, the education or the learning acquisition can, can in the form of e-learning, um, open access learning, maybe uh, through online, this is very accessible to all of us, um, can be research uh, learning, uh, pardon for the spelling, and self-directed learning. But flexible learning also have its principles, um, autonomous learning. Uh, it, it allows or maybe requires the student to learn it from its own. It could be in the form of guided or self-paced. Uh, collaborative learning because a collaboration of the teachers at the same time with the students. Um, being creative as well and being skilled. Flexible learning or online learning is a form of distance learning as well. So this is, I think most of the teacher is not new to this anymore, but I think it's, it pays off also to recheck or reevaluate maybe uh, what it gives us or what we can get from this type of learning. Okay, it has a different dimension. Um, if someone asks me, sir, what if there are only four dimensions that a teacher can use? Can we still consider it as a flexible? Um, the main purpose of, of this flexible learning is it does not focus on the teacher. It focuses on the choices of the students where they can acquire learning on the on the pace that they want of the given um, of the given consideration. First would be the time. Given the given the amount of uh, duration as as an um, teacher, uh, an excellence of teacher education, or any university has its, um, um, what we call deadline. However, prior to the deadline, um, the student may opt to when he can study, when he will, um, the, the, the momentum can be in the perspective of the student, not by the teacher. So, if we are giving enough time for our students to learn, and we are just following a certain uh, guidelines. That will be okay because, especially in this hard time, um, I think it pays off to to understand them as well, uh, give them the, the amount of time to, to comply. But then again, we we never compromise the objective, the the outcomes, and of course, we never compromise the the excellence of the quality of education. Second would be the location. It is not something new to us because even before, unnoticeably, unnoticeably um, it is being practiced. Students can learn from library, at home, coffee shop, um, from a certain place they're comfortable. So flexibility of location is, was occurred even before, so it's not new to us. Mode of delivery. Um, mode of delivery. Uh, that's that's why we are uh, the university is uh, in the rigid training of using Canvas and Microsoft uh, Three Sixty Five. Uh, these are the type of deliveries that we are going to use for the succeeding um, maybe semester or. And I give credits to the again to, to the administrators and because. They, despite the pandemic, they they never forget the last, the least, and the loss of the students. These are the students in remote areas. Um, the Far Eastern University 
I think it's the only university I've seen that's using or going to adapt the analog that despite of little connection or little connectivity to the internet, we will able to um, give education in the form of analog to our students. And I, and I haven't seen that for, for some university yet. And this is one of the best mode of delivery that the university has or have and and i give credits to those who, who really put so much uh heart and and time to think about it to, to come up with the analog learning style if we are first thing to um to utilize uh it really depends on the personality of the student if he or she is comfortable of learning it individually, then he can he or she as student can opt to that. However, as I mentioned, if the personality of the student more comfortable of doing it by a pair or by by other classmates, it's called a collaboration. Or being doing it by a group. So these are types of uh, dimensions of flexible learning that maybe we can also reset or evaluate. Next would be the content. In other universities, um, given the specific topic and discussing the, the specific outcomes of the program, students have the option have the option to choose what kind of program that he or she would would really uh, would affect the the future of the future of the, the student. Even before, as I mentioned, it is, it is being practiced. Students are, are, are have, or have the capacity or have the option to choose what kind of program or course that he or she may um, enter in the university. For example, the, the, the Bachelor of Science in Exercise Science or the Bachelor of um, Accountancy. These are the type of programs, or there's a lot of programs that a specific student can choose from. Followed by the organization. Organization pertains to, as of the moment, I think um, it's a, it has a limited uh, capacity because they don't have infrastructure. Most of the learning uh, may take place from our home. Um, I hope everyone is uh, not limited to their own space. And uh, it pertains to a, a specific infrastructure that's from school or, or a home-based learning or, as I mentioned, uh, maybe they have a specific place to, to study. Lastly would be the requirements. Okay, uh, this is a very controversial part of the, part of the flexible learning uh, dimension. It's because um, despite the fact that we are getting so much um, time, location, mode of delivery, learning style, content, or organization. Requirement is something that not being embraced the, um, in the past year. Uh, a best example of this, me as uh, teaching physical education for almost 15 years, uh, I was once um, uh, I was once approached by the student, sir, I, I, I don't have the I don't have the talent to dance. Um, the objective of the dancing uh, was to show nationalism or patriotism, and she just suggested that uh, there, are, there. I, I know some some ways to for me to show patriotism and uh, nationalism. Would it be in the proper of writing, writing an essay or or uh, a poem? Would it be a possible for me to create a presentation that tackles uh, nationalism as well because as, as she mentioned if I am going to base from from a specific type of activity which is dance I think I will not be able to comply with their, their requirement because I'm not capable of dancing so. however the student upon convincing the student na maybe you, you could try for a bit so I can see uh, if not given Given the flexibility of choosing the type of requirement he or she or a student can, can give you, might be also considered. However, 
as mentioned always by any administrator or any school, we never compromise excellence. We can consider the dimension, but lowering our lowering the the quality of teaching and learning it's, it's, it's not arguable. Okay, so so some of teachers might ask if it could be a mix of some dimensions, but should not be limited to one because it will not be able to call as flexible dimensions as well. So I hope teachers. Um, I know in this hard time that it's, it's, it's very challenging for us and, and I appeal to my colleagues and um, maybe in, in the glimpse of uh, flexible modalities, we, we can revisit some, some factors of it that we could use. Um, this is not for us. I know every teacher has the heart to, you know, to teach. Um, maybe uh, we also consider the capacity of our students as well. Next would be the glance of uh, the flexible learning. As mentioned by Prosper de Vera of Commission Higher Education, there are, they, we call it four P's. It's the pace, the place, the process, and the product. Uh, pace pertains to where can we go through learning experience? Is it by a self-paced or teacher-led? So, as you can see, this is highly understandable. The place, where can I experience learning? Is it through a distance learning, wired or non-wired? Or as I mentioned a while ago, I give so much credit to Far Eastern University for, uh, for the initiative that we are able to really apply the analog one. So this is something to do to me specifically, but this is in our own little way, we can help our students to be how they educated or at least they can they will feel they are not the least among among other students the process would be how do i experience learning is it through printed is it by non-printed or by modular is it by online or as i can remember last week when we do had a meeting the the laboratory based is is one of the challenges of the university are they, and I know uh, if a subject is pertaining to a laboratory, there is also what we call augmented reality. Uh, uh, other universities are adopting it because, um, and as I mentioned, it's an augmented reality that can, they can also experience. So, last one would be the product. Um, if, we pertain, uh, if we are talking about the, the, the traditional one, we are talking about the manual or the automated. So how will they able, or us teachers, how will they able, how we will able to see an evidence in what kind of form? Uh, as a physical education teacher, it, sometimes it uh, put it, it pinch my heart that because of online learning, I can only see my students performing through through the the World Wide Web. However, uh, I believe and despite the fact that I can I can't see them face to face, or there's no physical classes. Given the um, the consideration of this, we never lose uh, the personal touch. All we have to do is to make them feel they are being appreciated, and all of their works are being um, recognized. To strengthen it, aside from uh, flexible learning, it is accompanied by sustainable learning as well. So, it always focuses on the gain of the student, not on a specific output, but from the education as a whole, from board and solar of 2016. I, I really would like love to share the the seven um, the seven uh, sustainable assessment uh, practices that can we can use during the time of pandemic. I know some of our beloved teachers, co 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 uh, teachers or colleagues are doing this. Maybe we just have to again, as I mentioned, maybe we can revisit and recheck if we are doing it um, in the midst of pandemic. Okay. 
There are seven principles of uh, good feedback and practice, according to Nicole um, McFarland in 2005. One will be the clarity of what performance is. In order for our students to come up with a very good outlook, we must remember, we have to remember that um, we have to show, the, uh, we have to give them an example or exemplar that what are we, uh, how we will they be judged? Or maybe the best example for this is the rubric. Uh, as a teacher and as a student, if they're going to look at the our CIB or, or the module and going to look at this specific criteria, how will they be graded, they will understand. At the same time, we can always explain them how it will be run or uh, what will be the part of the 20%. Uh, we can always show also uh, an example. So I think um, most of our colleagues understand uh, some of our students are audio visual learners. So if they will be able to see an, uh, an exemplar example, they will understand fully. So it's clear already. Facilitate self-assessment. As teacher, we not, not apply, but in our social responsibility, we have to tell them honestly what they are lacking and what they are good at. We have to constructively to tell them what are the status of their uh, their output, what are the room for improvement, and at the same time, let them think. Um, Despite the fact that it's a it's a very good and promising um, write up or a research output, it it is subject to a revision for not just for the criticism but it's for improvement. Next would be deliver high quality feedback. As I mentioned, as teachers, um, they, our students will appreciate more if we will be more honest enough. To, to, uh, to tell them, um, let me share something that uh, if I'm conducting an online class, I make it up to the point that I'm not just giving comments to the, to, to the output or the, their papers. Um, I'm using, well, most of us using Canvas or the conference or the Microsoft Teams to tell them, to tell them uh, maybe we are lacking something here or there are missing piece of the paper or address, address the, the issue properly. Um, I think you have more, uh, the, the words are redundant uh, or maybe we can say, if we don't understand a specific part of the paper, we could honestly ask them to explain it. The, our students, we will be more uh, appreciative that we as they're reading there um, papers or an output. From there, from, from that point, they, they, you will see your students, no, sir, uh, how will I able to serve your faces? Or how will I able to come up with a good paper? Will you able to help me if, or will you able to, will I able to, can I access your uh, permission to, for me to ask during this hour if I do have questions? So these are the type of teaching and learning style or methods that are very essential to us as a teacher. Next would be encourage teacher and peer dialogue. It, it is common that most of the time we are giving them uh, a feedback, but as a teacher, I think, let us hear our students. Um, hear them uh, why they decided a specific type of, or why, what uh, their thoughts about a certain issues, or what do you think about proposing this kind of research? Let them um, speak from their heart, and you will understand. All of our students are capable enough to be more creative. Sometimes they are just as scared to tell teachers that, sir, can, can can I propose this? But then again, as I mentioned a while ago, we never compromise excellence or we never compromise the quality of education. In my own little opinion, 
as long as I'm hitting the, the outcomes. And then maybe my student will have another option of, as I mentioned, it's a requirement. Form of requirement, they can express themselves. I, it's, I will appreciate more because from there, we can see our students be more creative. It's positive motivation and self-esteem. Um, sometimes I... I, I It, it, it saddens me that some of my students saying, oh, tungit kasi ni, ano eh, hindi po ako makapagsalita, something like that. Or, or nahihiya siyang magtanong. Or, not all of our students have the same personality. Maybe prior to our uh, start of the class, we can ask them, oh, how are you? How do you, um, what keeps you busy this week? Something that personal touch uh, is not so personal, but you know, something that we, they will be comfortable of, that he, he, we show our concern to them. Um, this, despite the fact that we give something uh, constructive criticism, we always put their self-esteem as well to in, in, in high regard. It's not us after all. It's the, the main purpose or the main reason we, we exist as a teacher is because our students. So I hope we appreciate that and we consider that we encourage positive motivation to them. I know some of our students are hard-headed or pasaway, but look in the deeper part of the students. They, they will follow you if they will uh, sorry for the term we, they will always follow us because we are their teachers but we will appreciate our profession more if we will see them from their heart that they are they are more willing to move or they are more willing to do their task not just because it's required it's because they love attending our class or they learn so much from us would be provide opportunities to close the gap between current performance and the performance expected with teachers. That's why um, from, the uh, from the previous performance, from your constructed criticism, you will see how our students improve. And with your guidance, I know teachers around the world, they will, they know this. It is um, food from Good for our heart that see our students progress. Feedback, last one would be use feedback to improve teaching. It is not just a responsibility to teach, but to improve ourselves. As an educator, um, uh, the challenge for us to, to innovate, to improve our teaching, to be the best of ourselves, is the same manner we lift our students as well. So if we can see our students improve, learn, and at the same time, appreciate what we are doing, you will see a lot of, or maybe a, a, a new type of teaching strategies or new learning modalities that you maybe can adopt for the next semester or adopt during your, your course, or I mean the semester itself, or the, the learning duration you will improve yourself. And as a manifestation of this, teachers are not born as an excellent person right away. We can see good gurus, we can see an excellent educator because they learn from a lot of experiences. In order to learn, we have to open our heart and mind that we are capable of learning. And as a teacher, I think um, this is coming from my heart. Personally, I think it's not just skill and knowledge that we impart our students. But at the end of the day, we always touch their lives. And that gives us so much fire in heart that we appreciate why we are teachers. And I hope in my little presentation, you will, I hope, 
some of it you might take from it not not because it does not justify flexible learning is the best learning modality at, as of the moment but it gives us a glimpse maybe we we can try to consider um not from being traditional or not uh so strict maybe we can try to consider also our students because this is not from the new normal i am i've heard this already <laughs> This is before this is the new normal, as you can see in my pitch, in, the, in the PowerPoint. But I, in, in, it saddens me that, as of the moment, we cannot go to the four walls of our classroom. However, as a teacher and educator, we it won't stop us to deliver quality education and touch the lives of our students. Thank you very much. If you do have a question, you may type it uh, on the Q&A box, and I, I would love to uh, answer each one of them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doc Dan, for sharing with us um, some timely information about sustainable assessment. So we currently have questions here on deck. Okay, so we have here from Michael, a graduate of FEU Batch 2009. Oh, hi. <laughs> okay, and the general science major. So the question is, can we include learning packets as part of flexible learning if my students can't go online 100% due to internet issues? Okay, um, this is a very timely question. Um, as I mentioned a while ago, it depends on the institution of what type of modalities they are trying to adopt. If your institution will adopt a type of analog, or a, we call it a correspondence learning, um, the institution will give you all the learning uh, modules in a semester in, in a piece of USB. So even if you don't have... Um, connectivity, you, the student will be able to answer each module on, on their own time and their own pace. But um, it depends on the content of the module as well on how the learning will take place. So again, I think all the universities and colleges uh, are challenged because of this pandemic and it caused us um, education reform. So again, yes, it is possible 100% online uh, on a very strategic manner on how will they put their the, the learning materials and at the same time the assessment. But it doesn't necessarily mean um, sustainable assessment will not take place. I think us teachers has to, to do mm, not more, but you know our social responsibility as a teacher to to ask or be open to our students to from their inquiries or questions as well, in order for us to help them. Thanks, Michael, for that question. So we now have another question from one of our attendees. Uh, but before that, uh, let me greet our graduate studies students Oy. taking up masters in PE. So <laughs> we have a lot of students here um, saying hello. Okay, so here is another question. Um, Dr. Denden, what is the biggest shift in assessment in the current situation? Maybe oh, this is like comparing the previous to the current assessment okay. mode. Uh, that is a very good question because it's very relevant nowadays. Now, it really depends first on the type of modalities that we are going to use. The biggest shift would be in the aspect of, uh, in the context of physical education, just an example. Uh, we tend to do an actual performance task. So, medyo sanay kami dyan. So, we need to see the students and able to dance, to perform. But, um, in other classes, uh, the big shift would be, it will be through online. Now, if you are assessing a performance through online, it will be very difficult. However, however, if the module that you are about to give 
that will equip them despite of the self pace okay the module will the, the learning materials or the content inside the module must be very informative at the same time uh, you have to include what type of assessment you're about to do depends on the outcomes of a specific uh, maybe a specific week because if we are assessing for example uh, I, I think I've, we've done this during our college um, English uh, speaking on a laboratory or we are able to talk during that time this one uh, the teacher can still assess you in, in, in different ways if you are not comfortable enough to uh, to do uh, online face-to-face -face, um, teaching, uh, sorry, uh, online face-to-face -face learning, the second option would be the pre-recorded one. You will have, on, on our end before, we do have a script and we are able to read it and record it. And then right after, we are submitting it to our teacher. So from their end, they're going to hear or at the same time the video, they will look at the gestures on how we are how we how we are able to speak, uh, the intonations, the and a different thing. Now, as I mentioned a while ago, it depends on the requirement. Uh, you are able you will ask the student and the requirements. What type of requirements can also can give you in, in in a very easy manner, without compromising the quality. Because as part of the, for example, as, as part of the Data Privacy Act, if the student doesn't want to, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, don't have the capacity to do it live, our teachers must have other options or a flexible method. So I, I hope I answered your, it really depends on, um, the big shift would be, how we were able to assess them in a flexible manner that we are not neglecting the, the quality of education, the quality. So, if we are uh, more comfortable of performance, maybe a pre-recorded one, and that would be good because the student will be able to check if they are performing well. And I guess the student can also have a sort of reflection, right? Yes. And this is uh, the time when uh, students can have uh, sufficient time to reflect on their own learning and then assess themselves before they'll be able to submit their requirements to their teachers, and right? And we'll see. Actually, this is one good part, no? Um, one of my students from the undergraduate, um, doesn't know how to do dance properly because we are not uh, given the, the, the gift of locomotor or motor movement. So, what he suggested during that time, maybe we can do a, 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 a specific dance. A specific dance. Uh, sir, uh, I don't know how to dance, dance a dance sport. Maybe, but I can try to dance a social ballroom. Then right after, if you're going to assess now your students, they will be more happy to talk uh, about it. And you will see how well they progress. And uh, you will love it. I, it, will, it will give us so much fire in our heart. The excess, and also justify the existence of us being, being an educator. Okay, so um, from something flexible to something sustainable, I think we have here a question that is something authentic. Um, it's from Fatima, a faculty of NDJC Senior High School. Um, so hello to the faculty of Fatima. Uh, so the, yeah, Senior High. So that uh, Fatima has a question, and it is: Our institution is applying distance and correspondence learning. Yeah. How can you recommend any methods on how to lessen cheating? Okay. Um, that is a very good question, no? Because even before, okay. 
uh, maybe we put it on a different perspective. We put it um, not in the cheating manner, but let us revisit what we are trying to give them. Okay? Uh, if we put so much uh, strict, or uh, how would I say this? It really depends on the learning materials you're going to give them and that type of assessment. Uh, when we said it's a correspondence, I think there's no connection at all. However, a, a study of 2017 of uh, McGregor uh, in the Philippines, it, it's 62% of the total population using um, an online platform where they can check their social media and what more during the pandemic. I, in terms of the assessment or the cheating per se, um, let me go back and let us recheck what we are trying to assess. Uh, as I mentioned a while ago, during this hard time, wag naman tayong masyadong, alam nyo yun, let us put our assessment in a very realistic manner or the smart. It should be specific. It should be attainable. It must be realistic, uh, time-bound. It should be like that. Um, I'm not saying the, the assessment, the type of assessment is wrong. I'm not saying the learning materials is bad. It's just that maybe we put so, some consideration. Can we have another type of assessment that will not um, uh, compromise the type of learning uh, outcomes? Or are we in a box that we have to assess them to a quiz? Okay, uh, there are different types of um, maybe, okay, another strategy would be the assessment can be sent through online. Um, again, if it's a correspondence, um, this is a total no connection at all. Eh? Uh, it is given, uh, they were given a module, if I'm not mistaken. I hope we, <laughs> it's very hard to assess if, not hard, but maybe we can think of another way. Okay. Aside from the quiz itself, because as, as mentioned by Dr. Aparicio, a qualitative one or a reflective journal can be done aside from a quiz. From the reflective journal, you will see or you can read how capable your students of, for example, if they are answering a math, a math subject or an English. From this end, you will understand the, are they from, from the reflective journal journal it must be um, congruent or how would I say the same message that they are first would be you have to check the the quicks and then use the reflective journal to reflect if it's how how knowledgeable is that in, in your student okay parang cross checking lang siya the other one the other one, the least one, if you will be given a chance to, to have an online platform, it's a, the, the three of those is a very good uh, form of assessment already or, uh, or the method. But then again, if it's a correspondence, I, I think we can give our trust to our students. And as teachers, we can post them. We, we don't, as I mentioned a while ago, we don't, just don't give them skills and knowledge. We always, we always touch their lives. And that's more beyond the education because we, we inject values. So if your student will be more committed enough and they will understand that if they will cheat. I know this is very easy to say, but you can see your students na mani. You can see your students how dedicated they are. And prior to that, I think you have a, a pre-existing evaluation kung, kung talagang a student do it honestly. Ang ganyan. So, I hope we will find uh, uh, we extend our our how do you say this? We extend our consideration. Thanks, Dr. Dan. I think uh, we've had a uh our quota for the Q&As to our other attendees. I'm sure Dr. Denden 
um, would accommodate your questions and would be glad to respond to your questions using the live event Q&A of Microsoft Teams. So um, again, uh, thank you very much for joining us in this uh, fourth session for our online lecture series. And I would like to thank uh, the Marketing and uh, Communications Office headed by um, our very own um, Sir Christian. Uh, thank you, Sir Christian, for facilitating our live event on Facebook. And thank you very much to Miss Jenny for helping us with our streaming using the Microsoft Teams. And of course, a big, big thanks to Dr. Denden. It is my privilege to be part of this. I know. Thank you. I, I again, I give credit to the administrators of the Far Eastern University, specifically the IE Graduate Studies and Undergraduate Studies. It is an honor. And uh, we are equally honored to actually share with our audience, share with our professionals and our future professionals uh, what we have in the Institute. So we look forward to having you again as our attendees in our next series, and in our next online lecture. To our attendees, please do not forget to sign the evaluation form that was posted by Miss Jenny so that um, you can provide your feedback for this event and uh, we can also hand over your e-certificate. So this is Chini and we hope you can join us again next week for another lecture which is about a very special topic to cater on our special students with special needs. God bless you, everyone, and the mabuhay tamaraos. Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tini. <laughs>